Okay, welcome back to this uh, tutorial. We're into the third stage and we're going to be looking at uh, ZBrush now. And we're going to be sculpting our foreground uh, rock piece. So to get started, uh, come over into the Tools palette and select the Terrain 3D and just click and drag in your viewport. And the uh, press T to enter the Edit Tool mode you can right click to rotate around it. Come across into the initialize palette on the right size and we're just going to decrease the size because we don't want it to curve uh, to, to start with we don't want it to curve too much and you can play around with the profiles as well if you uh, if you feel like it uh, sometimes editing it so it doesn't smooth out towards the edges uh, can be quite good if you just uh, pinch these and move them out just to get an overall sort of um, curved plane and once you're happy with that you can subdivide it if you want I typically find it's better to do that after uh, making it a poly mesh 3D so you click on that button and now we can start to edit it <coughs> click B on your keyboard and select the clay tubes brush and we will just start to layer in some features of, of our rock. Some of the general shapes that you want to actually start uh, painting in here. Um, you want to keep it really quite uh, general and just keep layering it. The clay tubes brush is really good for uh, as it's, its additive. So if you pick, pick the pen up or your mouse uh, button up a, a couple of times it'll add on top of the previous stroke that you've, uh, that you've made. So uh, we just keep uh, sort of sculpting in a couple of things. So in, in terms of the brushes, uh, I find the clay tubes will do most of the work until the later stages. Uh, there's several ways to make uh, rock uh, features in ZBrush. Um, and it's really just a matter of your own uh, sort of experimentation and uh, y you can find different tutorials on the net about how to uh, make the sort of uh, features that you want if you want flat, uh, <coughs> a flat featured rock you can use the planar brush uh, anything that you really feel the need to so press S on your keyboard to change the size of the brush or press and hold spacebar and you can have all the quick um, accessible uh, features like the size and the focus and the, the intensity uh, press Control D once you're happy with the base mesh and that will subdivide your mesh and just keep on uh, continue painting and generally go over the entire terrain at least uh, at least once to add that detail uh, in some additional detail into this next subdivision level and uh, and just keep layering them and and try and increase the uh, the these grooves make them a little sharper um, we can, I'll show you a trick uh, in a moment of how to uh, make them a little bit make these rocks seem a little bit closer uh, but for now just uh, keep layering them up in those corners and get some pathways going <coughs> Like uh, like in here, get a bit of a bit of a triangular shape going, and uh, you'll start to see raising up there. If you want, you can uh, if you want to lower a certain section or take away a certain section, uh, hold the Alt key, and that will inverse uh, the invert the brush that you're using to subtract it. And instead of undoing something, what I find with natural uh, formations it's better to actually hold if you don't like an effect you just hold the shift key instead so say I've done something here and it's it's come up too high and I don't I don't like the look of this I just hold the shift key to smooth it back <coughs> now this works really well with early stages of your uh, designs because you, it allows you to sort of break up the the features but as you get towards the end holding the shift key is going to start uh, smoothing too much out and you're going to start losing noise noise detail and any other sort of features that you've sculpted in so there's a couple of uh, things that you that I'll show you in terms of that as well so okay I'm ha pretty happy with this uh, at the moment I'll subdivide again 
and I'll just zoom in a little bit and increase the draw size and I'll start painting again on the left. A couple of really short strokes can be better than long ones because it sort of just layers it up in a uh, non-uniform way uh, and try and run sort of around the general features. This is probably a bit too big for what I want and uh, just continue on and after after you've done a couple of uh, iterations of this sort of uh, style painting, which is actually quite manual uh, for my for my taste, but it is it's still uh, enjoyable to uh, to do this. Um, you can end up with some very different sort of similar styles, but different different shapes. Uh, once you've done a couple of subdivision levels, you can add some noise and displacement and and uh, and I'll show you them in uh, just a moment. A couple of the other uh, tools that you'll want to use is if you press B again on your on your keyboard, uh, <clears throat> the really uh, to get a, a flat plane, use the planar cut brush and in order to filter things down like this uh, once you've got the you press P to get it up press P which is or you know which whatever letter you want of the name of the brush and that will filter it down to just the brushes that start with P and then you can use R to actually select that brush and then when I go in I can start playing R cutting uh, away if I just uh, increase the size of this brush you'll see the effect so that can be good for creating some uh, flat areas, uh, some some cuts and and such. But for for what we're doing, I'm going to stick to the clay tubes for now, and decrease the size again. I'm happy with that. I'm going to Control D again and start layering it on. And what you'll notice now is the clay tubes brush. Now that we've got a higher resolution, the clay tubes brush is actually starting to show up a little bit too much uh, you know you can see this very defined uh, edge so what I might do is uh, change the focal shift to more of a center uh, so that there's more of a fade out and decrease the intensity uh, at least for now and we'll move on to other brushes in uh, in just a moment and you can smooth back things as well to uh, to sort of get rid of that uh, monotonous patching sort of effect that you get but uh, it's all just about the uh, the layering and a lot of this is actually going to be uh, hidden in the uh, the later stages which is sort of uh, adding uh, adding geometry or adding up a layer uh, adding up that 3d feel to our to our rocks uh, with the clay tubes brush and uh, as I said it's it, it is quite manual but uh, it does help to add a bit of that uh, randomness. Uh, so we'll just do this last one through here. And to, for instance, in in this area here, we have quite a bit of sort of it's a little bit boring in there. So I might press uh, if you press Control, uh, sorry Shift D to go down by subdivisions, and you can start and uh, come in here and paint in little bit of geometry maybe increase the size increase the intensity and come and paint this in so we're just extending this this rock f uh, feature into that press D to sh to go up and in, uh, in subdivisions and we might do the same over here shift D to go down go down to a base level move that in press D once to go up maybe paint a little bit more detail maybe move this one in a bit as well uh, D again, I'm not liking this this join here, so I'll smooth that back and get rid of it. And paint a little bit more of detail. I'll come back over here and paint some in there as well. And D to go back up. We're getting some nice rock features now through here. And let's go back out and check this out. Alright, so this is our top level uh, of iterations. And so at the moment, 
this is looking like we've got some nice shapes but it's still looking like it's very painted so we'll come across to the right and in the surface uh, palette if I can find it uh, for this <clears throat> we can click on the surface palette drop down click on noise and you'll immediately see the noise being added and it will change the scale to a much larger scale because uh, we don't want a general noise we just want big uh, patches of noise to influence our terrain our, uh, our s sculpture uh, you can change the strength of it and also we'll come in and change the noise curve and we'll just flatten out a, a random section uh, with the curves and what that's going to give us is these patches of smooth like similar to sort of the rock being uh, polished in some of these areas you can uh, f do a focal shift as well if you if you want to just tweak that uh, that smoothness so you can move it down to whatever you want and once you're happy with that uh, click apply to mesh and you'll immediately notice if especially if you're using a low subdivision uh, you'll notice that a lot of the detail is actually lost uh, but that's okay because you can just uh, subdivide again a couple of times uh, enable the noise again we might just go and uh, reset this decrease the noise scale uh, maybe change around the strength a little bit and it's probably too small the noise scale again maybe just play around with a couple of the settings and apply it to the mesh again and so now we've got a uh, a smaller level of noise that's sort of in and around uh, these features so to add a little bit more detail to this we're going to start using the uh, the uh, rake tool so press B and R and we can use the rake tool and this is good for cutting in uh, areas like like through here if I uh, just come in a little bit um, this there's a bit of a uh, ditch through here and I want to accentuate that I also want to accentuate these uh, these areas and probably along the edges of our uh, of our rocks so just if you hold alt you can subtract the rate or the rake through there uh, typically go down to a, a lower subdivision than what you're using for your noise because otherwise you'll start removing that noise uh, detail and then if I step back up I can see I've got those those rakes through there. Another one that is good is the slash tool. So press S, and then you've got slash here. You've got a couple of different uh, different slash uh, tools, and the the effect is different for each of them. And this is uh, good for sort of uh, warping the terrain. If you push harder, you'll get a, a harder edge, and it'll sort of push one down, pull one up, and uh, but a, a lighter. Uh, stroke can be really good with with a bit of layering as well. These are really good for making uh, earlobes as well. Uh, so you just come around and then then uh, smooth it out, and because uh, it just dis distorts it really uh, quite nicely. So I'm just going to shift down a couple, and I'm just going to paint in some some general uh, areas where I see some edges, like through here. Might if you go left to right, it'll have the alpha uh, in a certain way and if you go right to left it goes well right left to right right to left and it's uh, obviously inverted so it's based on the starting position so you can uh, sort of just paint in a couple of different ways to uh, to make it a bit more unique going around these corners is another really good one because you'll start to get a couple of layers of the rock so for instance <clears throat> if I want to uh, let's find a good one probably uh, this through here uh, around this corner if I want to get a couple of layers in through here I can uh, chuck a couple of those down but be a bit lighter on it then when I shift back up I've got a couple of uh, you know more interesting this is another good one a good example as well through here uh, I can layer through there and then as I step back up I haven't exactly uh, I haven't smoothed it back uh, yet but we'll uh, go back in smooth that down and when I go back up it sort of 
blends in a little bit more with the noise. So you can you can just keep on uh, adding the details uh, like that, and uh, make sure that you uh, you use the lowest subdivision that you can for any major geometry sort of additions like this. Any small scratches and such that you want to add, they can be done on a higher uh, higher resolution, uh, higher subdivision. But these ones, uh, major things like this, you want to have on a, a more base uh, base mesh. And you can also paint in the details uh, like I've just done and then go down a subdivision and smooth them back on a more basic subdivision if you don't like the the strength of them but you still want to keep the main features uh, so all right pretty pretty happy with with that probably a little bit of work to to go into this uh, these the tops of these rocks but for now uh, I might just play around with this one here uh, smooth that back a little bit actually I'll undo that. I'll go down a subdivision, smooth that back, and then maybe add a, add a few more in there in a different direction. And then when I uh, come back up, there'll be they'll add add together and and uh, sort of have an additive effect. And again, it's just uh, layering layer upon layer of of, uh, of your 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 sculpting. Okay, so let's just say that we are happy with that. Uh, it's It takes a little bit of practice to get exactly what you want, but uh, for the moment, uh, that's pretty, pretty good. I'm going to add one more layer of noise, of larger scale noise, onto that top uh, subdivision. And I'm going to apply that to mesh. Hopefully that's not too bad. Yep, that's good. Happy with that. And now, in order to get this from ZBrush to View, uh, we want to take it with the normal map, uh, and then we want to uh, add the two together after we've imported it to View, so that View can take advantage of the normal map inside uh, that's been generated from ZBrush. So in order to create the normal map, we come across to the right here and click the drop-down box. And when we click Create Normal Map, uh, we get a pop-up saying, don't use the top uh, subdivision level. So essentially what ZBrush is telling you is it wants you to uh, tell it how many levels of subdivision do you want to calculate uh, the normal map for. So if I press Shift D twice, it will come down in, uh, will come down in quality uh, by two levels. And if I click normal, Create Normal Map, it uh, calculates for a moment and then we will uh, we'll have our normal map. Um, now this normal map is 2048, so 2K by 2K, but you can't really see much uh, at the moment. Now that's because we're still using quite a high resolution mesh to create the normal map from. Uh, you can, another a, a trick that I like to do is to go down a couple more le levels, uh, maybe even to the second or third from the bottom, and click create normal map then and you'll notice immediately that the uh, normal map has a lot more detail now this is as I was saying because ZBrush has been told use the top four uh, levels of subdivision <clears throat> and so it's calculating all those levels but what we can do is we can use the, the normal map uh, generated from the top four levels uh, of subdivision, but we can then export the the second top level of subdivision, so that you're sort of overlapping the the uh, the two together to increase the um, the effect of that uh, normal map. Um, then once that's done, you'll get a, a normal map in here. You right click on, uh, sorry, you click on clone, come across to your texture, and just um, export the uh, the texture once you've uh, once you've selected it. Um, sorry I can't show you exactly how, um, there's plenty of more information on, uh, online about it, so um, I'm sure it won't be too difficult to, to find out how to do that.